on my theoretical knowledge, but anyways. Let's get into it. You're configuring a point-to-point -point link between two routers. Is that big enough for you guys? Let's just nix this. All right, that's better. You are configuring point-to-point -point link between two routers and have been assigned an IP of 7781.12.14 WAC 30. Um, let's see. That means all except the last two bits are going to be network or yeah network bits and the last two should be host bits oh boy so two to the power of subnet bits minus two jeez Wow, right off the bat, too. I was just reviewing this. All right, you know what? I'm just going to go. I'm going to go ahead and go cheat in one of my notes. Just because I'm pretty sure I'm going to get this wrong if I don't. Um, and I want to learn as I'm testing. So forgive me. Forgive me. That's a rough start, huh? I knew I should have reviewed this before I took any practice tests, too. I feel like this is one of the trickier topics, but this will be good. This will be good. It would help to know where it is. Hmm. Okay. So I'm looking at Professor Messer's notes for class lists. We need class. We need class lists submenu, right? I believe. And that's fine. I'll move that there. Okay, so WAC 30, as I said, it should be all bits except the last two would be network ID. That would be subnet bits. No. Subnet bits would be the last two. So two to the power of Oh I see. Subnets would so yeah, subnet and bits would be thirty. Host bits would be two. So host per subnet would be two to the power of host bits, which is two. So four. Or two to zero one. One host per subnet. So I believe the answer would be 0.13 then. Could be that one. Uh because there's only gonna be three addresses per subnet. Wait a minute, that doesn't seem right. Well the number of subnets is massive. Uh, that'd be like two to two to the thirty. 30 bits. Oh boy. So this would be like one sub would be like 77.81.12. Dot zero. Right? And that would be zero, one, two. And it would go three, four, five. 
six, seven, eight, one, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14. So maybe it's 12. Wow. Okay. Not a, not a good start. That's This is good, though, because uh, I'm pointing out things that I need to review, and subnetting is at the top of the list. So... Which of the following network topologies require that all nodes have a point-to-point -point connection with every other node in the network? Point-to-point -point with every other node, that would be a mesh. It's like, like that. You've just finished installing a new web application and need to connect it to your Microsoft SQL database server. Which port must be allowed to enable communications through your firewall between the web application and your database server? That is, let's see, Microsoft SQL, that is 1433. I know that because I memorized it with flashcards. You are troubleshooting a network connectivity issue on a student's workstation at Dion Training. You check the details for the 802.11 AC wireless network interface card and it reports the current RSSI level is negative 95 decibels. Which of the following issues could cause this RSSI level? Okay, um, insufficient wireless coverage. That's a bad signal. That's really that's really weak. Um, that's like unusable, basically. So encryption protocol mismatch would just not cause it to authenticate. Same thing with incorrect password. Same thing with wrong SSID. So the only one that makes sense is insufficient wireless coverage. So that's what we'll go with. You are performing a high availability test of a system. As part of the test, you create an interruption on the fiber connection to the network, but the network traffic was not rerouted automatically. Which type of routing system is, is the system utilizing? Uh, let's see. Uh, it would be static. Is that a trick question? Yeah, it's got to be static because it didn't change. So, non-responsive. All, the, all these other ones would change. Uh, distance vector would be based off number of hops. Dynamic would, it would mean, mean so it would change. Uh, hybrid, I'm guessing, would be a combination of some of these. So it doesn't make sense. The one that makes sense, the most sense is static. A workstation is connected to the network and receives an APIPA address, but cannot reach the VLAN gateway of 1010.154. Other PCs in the VLAN subnet can communicate with the VLAN gateway and access websites on the internet. Which of the following is the most likely the source of this connectivity problem? Okay, a paper address tells me that there that it did not successfully reach a DHCP server. So let's see what the answers are. Uh, SFP module. What? That's like something totally different, isn't it? I think that has doesn't have to do with converting fiber to Ethernet. It's connected to the network and receives an APIP address. Cannot reach the VLAN gateway. Other PCs in the VLAN subnet can do everything. What's most likely? So, 802.1Q trunking would be for multiple VLANs over one port. So that doesn't necessarily make sense. That would, that would help the VLANs to work better. Uh, SFP module. Uh, should I cheat? I just want to review what is an F, what is a, mm, small form factor pluggable mini GBIC uh, SP. Okay, yeah. So it's for converting gigabit ethernet to, yeah, or for fiber optic, or copper. Okay, so it's a converter for a plug, plug, yeah, thing. That's definitely not it. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess this one because it's the only one that mentions a Pippa. 
I don't understand how it could be misconfigured. That's like an automatic protocol. It's like an automatically something IP address. But this one doesn't make sense either. OS updates would not affect internet protocols. Uh, I don't like that question. Dion Training is trying to connect two geographically dispersed offices using a VPN connection. You've been asked to configure their networks to allow VPN traffic into the network. Which device should you configure first? To allow VPN traffic? I mean, firewall seems important. Well, I guess if you're doing point to point, uh, the modem would be bringing the internet from the ISP. I think it would still be a firewall. Technically, the modem would be closer to the edge of the network. Um, I'm going to stick with firewall. You just started work as a network technician at Dion Training. You have been asked to check if DHCP snooping has been enabled on one of the network devices. Which of the following commands should you enter within the command line interface? Hmm. Um. Dang. Is show config even valid? Show co show show co no. Show int. That would be like a specific interface, wouldn't it? I... Uh, that's the only one that I. I mean, I know these two are both legit, but. Uh, I'm not familiar with these two commands, so I'm going to go with show interface. Technician is configuring a computer lab for the students at Dion Training. Computers need to be able to communicate with each other on the internal network. But students using computers should not be able to access the internet. The current network is segmented using a triple homed firewall to create the following zones. Zone interface, IP address, public ETH 0, 66, 13, 24, 16, mark 30, instructors ETH 1, 172, 16, 11, WAC 24, students ETH 2, 192, 168, 11, WAC 24. What role in the firewall should the technician configure to prevent students from accessing the internet? Huh. Hmm. Deny all traffic. From ETH2 to ETH0. I'm going to guess that because public would be internet, right? Or, oh, I see. It would be. Sorry, there's a dog fight outside. So now traffic from ETH0 to ETH2. So uh, students could try to request web pages, they get some traffic out, but traffic coming back in. The, the, the web pages would, would be denied. So, uh, yeah, that makes sense. The only way they'd be able to get through the net is if they went through instructors. Yeah. And then they'd have to be like brainy students that knew how to hack and then they deserve it anyway. Your network is currently under attack from multiple hosts outside of the network. Which type of attack is most likely occurring? That would be a denial of service. Spoofing, on path, yeah, that makes the most sense. You are working as a network administrator and are worried about the possibility of an insider threat. You want to be, able, you want to enable a security feature that would remember the layer to address first connected to a particular switch port to prevent someone from unplugging your workstation from the switch port and connecting their laptop to that same switch port. Which of the following security features would best accomplish this goal? Eight hundred two nine one X. An insider threat. Yeah, that would be, this would be network access control, uh, access control list, port security, or 802.1x, which is authenticating through ports or wireless connections. Um, so it's definitely one of these three. It's not access control list, I don't believe. 
Oh man, that's hard because they're all related. <laughs> that's a that's a tricky question. I don't know exactly which one is best fitting. Um, port security, from my understanding, would would be the most fitting. But 802.1x also makes sense. And honestly, so does network access control. But I feel like this is more broad. And this is more specific. And this is also applicable to multiple things. So we'll stick with port security. If you're trying to select the best network topology for a new network based on the following requirements, the design must include redundancy using a minimum of two cables to create the network. The network should not, wait. A minimum of two. The network should not be prone to congestion. Therefore, each device must wait for its turn to communicate on the network by passing around a token. Which of the following topologies would best meet the client's requirements? All right, that's going to be a... Ring? Because it talks about passing around a token, and I know that's something that's associated with uh, ring topology. Um... Basically, it's like that they pass around the talking stick to, to each other. And it also does a minimum of two cables because it's a ring. So if this connection is broken, you still have this connection on the other side, right? It's in my, the picture's in my brain. I should like open up paint or something. Anyway, I'm pretty sure that's correct. A home user reports to a network technician that the internet is slow when they attempt to use their smartphone or laptop with their Wi-Fi network. That, okay, most common problem ever. Internet's slow. The network administrator logs into the admin area of the user's access point and discovers that multiple unknown devices are connected to it. What is most likely to cause this issue? Multiple unknown devices. Uh, what is the most likely thing? Our poisoning? Yeah, that could be. I mean, our poisoning would be... They're like redirecting all the traffic through their own device. The hackers redirecting all the victims' um, traffic through their devices, which would slow things down when they're using their smartphone or laptop. An evil twin is possible, but why would there be unknown devices on the network? Probably not connected to a botnet. Um, WPS attack could have occurred, but that wouldn't be indicated by multiple devices on the network. So, stick with that. What is the flag used to terminate a connection between two hosts when the sender believes something has gone wrong with the TCP connection between them? That would be a reset. A fin would be graceful. A reset would be disgraceful <laughs> when something has gone terribly wrong. It's a dirty breakup. A client, a messy breakup. A client has asked you to provide their local office with the best solution for a wireless network. Based on their requirements, the client has stated that their users We'll need a wireless network that provides a maximum of 54 megabytes per sec megabits per second. Like lowercase b is bits, the uppercase is bytes. There are eight bits in a byte. Get it right. 54 megabits per second of bandwidth and operates in the 2.4 gigahertz frequency band. Which of the following wireless network types should you install to meet their needs? Okay, so this is going to the chart of all the freaking Wi-Fi's. <clears throat> So, a maximum of 54? Why? Okay, that's not A. B. G. I want to say G, but I think G was in both. Ah, oh, gosh. Okay. You know what? I got to take notes on what I need to review because... This, otherwise, what am, how am I going to remember? So, definitely you look up uh, subnetting and get that down like to a science. Um, Wi-Fi standards is going to be something else. Why am I doing this on paper? I should be doing this on the interwebs, right? Try again, buddy. All right, you guys do not get to see my Google notes. All right, take a note, take a note, take a note. Uh, subnetting and Wi-Fi standards. And I'm sure there's something else. 
but I, I mean, that one question really threw me, but it's so specific. Uh, we'll, we'll just look at the answer and see if we got it right. If we got it wrong, we'll, we'll review it. Um, I'm pretty sure it's A or B, just based off of the 54 megabits per second. That's not very much at all, and I'm pretty sure B was 5 gigahertz, so this might actually be A. If it's not A, it's G, but I'm pretty sure G was in both. Right, we're going to go with A. We're going to go with A. Which of the following concepts is the most important for a company's long-term health in the event of a disaster? In the event of a disaster? Long-term health? I mean, off-site backups. If you don't have off-site backups, you lose everything. It, yeah, but because you could fix all these other things. You can't fix not having off-site backups. The administrator would like to use the strongest encryption level possible using PSK without utilizing an additional authentication server. What encryption type should be implemented? Uh, that would be WPA personal. WPA2 um, enterprise requires uh, an authentication server. So that's, that's a no-go. Um, these are whatever. This is this is a terrible product. This is no insecure. It's completely never use this. This is uh, impractical, and you can spoof Max, so it's not secure either. We're gonna go with WP Personal. Lynn is a home user who would like to share music throughout the computers in her house using an external USB hard drive connected to a router that she purchased over a year ago. The manufacturer states that the router can recognize drives up to four terabytes in size, but she cannot get her three terabyte hard drive to show up on the network. <laughs> Which of the following should Lynn do to solve this issue? Flash the firmware to her router. If Lynn does that, she will break her router because she will mess that up. Download a new music player. Load the latest hard drive, hardware drivers for her USB drive. Install the latest. You should do all three of these, but you should do this one first. And then you should do this one. You probably should do this one too. And then this would be a last resort, but I think this is the answer because... Uh, it's not showing up on the network. Both these. You shouldn't flash your router. You should just download the update through the web interface. But we're going to go with... It's one of these two, I know. But Well, the drivers would be specific to the endpoint trying to access the drive. Ah. Honestly, this guy's questions are not perfect. Um, I think the ones in the test are both trickier but also more more precise so i've only taken the a plus that was a two that was two separate tests for one certification those questions are tricky but they're they're precise so if you know the answer you know that you know the answer if you don't know the answer it's really hard to guess <laughs> um basically these i feel like maybe i just don't know the answers but um they're splitting hairs a little bit. A network technician must allow HTTP traffic from the internet over port 80 to an internal server running HTTP over port 81. Which of the following is an example of? That would be port forwarding. Yeah. I gotta go faster. I gotta like, I'm, I'm behind two questions. Rick is configuring a Windows computer to act as a jump box. On his network, he implements static routing to control the networks and systems the jump box communicates with. Which of the following commands did he use to configure this on the Windows machine? I'll be honest, I have no idea what a jump box is. Static routing? Uh... I'm guessing IP, I guess. Let's see. Huh. Oh, sick. Oh, it's totally route. IP's not, an, IP's not a command. The technician needs to ensure wireless coverage in the green space near the center of the college campus. The antenna is being installed in the middle of the field on a pole. <laughs> Which type of antenna should be installed to ensure maximum? 
omnidirectional, my friend. You need to go all direction. A third-party vendor has just released patches to resolve a major vulnerability. There are over 100 critical devices that need to be updated. What action should be taken to ensure the patch is installed with minimal downtime? Okay, so the options are between testing in a lab, just do it right away, or do it in the next scheduled maintenance period. And the question is, minimal downtime to critical vulnerability. So I would say, yeah, test it in a lab, because bring your whole network down, it's a guarantee. If, if you have a critical vulnerability, it's a maybe, it's a maybe downtime. So deploy the patch in a lab, get approval, immediately install. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I mean, you could also do this option, but I feel like because it doesn't list the approval step, that the, the first one's more correct. By the book, yo. What type of services can allow you to get more storage and more resources added to the cloud as fast as possible? What type of services? Uh, rapid elasticity is I mean, that's what, it's so, so metered services would be paying for what you use, which, which would be the model you'd want, but the feature of the services is a rapidly elastic cloud platform. So I'm going to go with that. Which type of wireless technology are OFDM, QAM, and, and QPSK examples of? Oh, I believe that's modulation because what is OFDM? Yeah, orthog orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. So it's basically splitting up different frequencies like so that it can uh, send data streams on more frequencies at a time. Wait, so that's not modulation though. <laughs> single information stream is split among sev several closely spaced narrowband subchannel frequencies instead of a single wideband channel frequency. So that would be, see, like, what, 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 I guess frequency is the answer, but, like, it's on a spectrum. It's not that. It's not modulation either. I think it's, it's I cheated again. The venture has configured a new 250 megabits per second WAN circuit but a bandwidth speed test shows poor performance when downloading larger files. The download initially reaches close to 250 megabits per second, but it begins to drop and shows spikes in the download speeds over time. The administrator checks the interface on the router and sees the following. Dion RTR01 hashtag uh, pound show interface ETH11 gb banner. Wow, that's hard to read in all text. One was up, lines up, hardware is gigabit. Addresses block, configured speed auto, actual 1 gbit, configured duplex, FDX, actual FDX, member of L2, VLAN 1, port is untyped, port state is forwarding, which the following actions should be taken to improve the network performance for this main connection. Uh, huh. It... Configure duplex. It doesn't say. Configured speed auto, actual one G bit. Configure duplex FDX, actual FDX. What is it? Yeah, what? Yeah, that's that's right. Full uh, FTX is full duplex. So it's not this one. It's not. What else? You VLAN one. That's the native VLAN, generally speaking. So, I mean, the first thing I'll try is this because. That's, I mean, IT, and we turn it off and on again. That's what we do. 
Uh, 1,000 base T transceiver should not make a difference because 1,000 base T is gigabit Ethernet. None of these answers make sense to me, except this one, so that's what we're going to go with. What is the network ID associated with the host located at... Oh, geez, I really need to work on this. So I'm done. Okay, 29 means we get 3 bits. No, oh, I'm going to do this on, on here so you guys can see too. Let's just see how terrible I am at this. Uh, so we have 3 bits. Okay, so we have 3 bits, right? 1, 2, 3. So that's... Two to, two to the zero power is one, two to the one power is two, two to, th to the three power is four. So we have eight possibilities. Because this would be times times, right? eight possibilities of hosts and the number is 29 so if we start our subnets with eights um, then that should be zero one two three four five six seven eight through fifteen Holy crap, let's go up to 123. Okay, so 123 divided by 8, right? 8 times 10 is 80. Eight times five is forty. That's one twenty. That'd be fifteen. So one twenty is the so 120 is the address, because then the 123 would be located within 120, it would be 120 uh, to like, you know, 127, right? And then, that. so yeah, so 120. Oh, look at that, it's an answer. Oh, boy. I think we did it. I think we got it. So, okay, so the way I figured that out is 29, so you know there's 32 bits in, in an IP address. Hopefully you know that, because there's four octets, and each octet has eight bits in it. Four times eight is 32. So we have three host bits. Uh, we have 29 network bits and three host bits. So three host bits means there are eight possibilities for each host, which means each subnet has eight addresses on it. Only six would be actually usable for hosts because we'd have the network address and the broadcast address. The network address is always the first address, the broadcast address is always the last address. If you've made it this far, you probably get this. You probably figured this out way before me. 120, I hope, is the answer. None of the other ones make sense, I don't think. We'll see. We'll see. Kind of makes me want to go back to the other one, but I am already running out of time to finish this test. Which of the following remote access tools is a command line tool? The blah 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 telnet, right? Yeah. To SSH is 22, RDP is 3389. Don't know what that is. I, I recognize that, but. Which of the following technologies could be used to ensure that users who log into a network are physically in the same building as the network they are attempting to authenticate on? Uh, you could use GeoIP and GPS location. I mean, this not necessarily, actually. You could use network access control. An employee of a highly secure company needs to use facial recognition in addition to a username password to establish a VPN successfully. What best describes this methodology? Two factor authentication. Something you are. Your face. A network technician connects three temporary office trailers with a point to multi point microwave radio solution in a wooded area. The microwave radios are up and the network technician can ping network devices in all of the office trailers. However, users are complaining that they are experiencing sporadic connectivity. What is the most likely cause of this issue? There's probably trees in the way. Interference. Dion Training Solutions is launching their brand new website. 
The website needs to be continually accessible to our students and reachable 24x7, which networking concept would best ensure that the website remains up at all times. That would be, I mean, high availability. Duh. 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 What is it? Whatever. Cares. Yeah, high availability. High availability would make sure that it was highly available. I don't know. I don't get it. The UPS that provides backup power to your server is malfunctioning because its internal battery has died. To replace the battery, you must shut down the server, unplug it from the UPS, unplug the UPS from its power source. You perform these actions, but think that there has to be a better way to increase the server's availability in the future. Which of the following recommendations would best increase the server's availability based on your experience with this UPS battery replacement? You need a hot swappable. The redundant power supply would work. Uh, sorry, sorry. No, yeah, you just need a redundant power supply so you can have it plugged into it. Wait, does that make sense? Oh, hello, cat. He's my cat. He's cat. Get the cat. He's back with me, John. Okay. Now, Tamara and her husband are driving to the beach for the weekend. While her husband drives, she's using her iPhone to browse Facebook. Her phone shows only one bar of 3G signal in the current location. Location. She can make and receive calls, but Facebook is refusing to load her news feed. <laughs> Which of the following is most likely the problem? One bar of 3G? Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, data feeds are insufficient. Surprise. You work for Dion Training as a physical security manager. You are concerned that the physical security at the entrance to the company is not sufficient. To increase your security, you are determined to prevent piggybacking. What technique should you implement first? Um, to prevent piggybacking? You need, like, a man trap. But that's not listed here. You need a man trap that people can only go through one at a time. Like... Like Mando, mandatory trap. Uh, require all employees to wear security badges, install CCTV, install an access control vestibule. That sounds like the best answer. I mean, an RFID badge reader, if you still, that's what, that's what people use piggybacking to bypass. And, and piggybacking is when you just walk in behind somebody. A network administrator updated an internet server to evaluate some new features in the current release. A week after the update, the internet server vendor warns that the latest release may have introduced a new vulnerability and a patch is not available for it yet. Which of the following should the administrator do to mitigate this risk? I read that out loud, but in my head I wasn't thinking about it. I'm thinking about how my cat scratched my chest. Oh. oh, the latest release may have released, the latest release may have a new vulnerability. There's no patch, so they need to roll back. Enable the host base, or downgrade the server, and defer. Yeah, just downgrade. You just go back. What's WAF and what's HIPS? I don't even know what those are. HIPS. Just, just roll it back. Which of the following terms represents the maximum amount of data as measured in time that an organization is willing to lose during an outage? That would be recovery, time, objective. This is mean time to recovery, mean time between failures, recovery point objective, recovery time objective. Thank you, college. Okay, this is a simulated performance-based question. If this was on the real exam, you would be asked to drag and drop the steps into the proper order for from step one to step seven. Dion Training's email server is not sending out emails to users who have a Yahoo email address. What is the proper order that you should follow to troubleshoot this issue using the CompTIA troubleshooting methodology? All right. Identify problem is always first, so it's one of these two. Establish a theory. Establish a plan of action. It's obviously this one. I mean, no, come on. Test the theory. Establish a plan of action. Implement solution. Verify solution. I don't, yeah. Yeah, you don't document before you verify, and you don't establish a theory before you identify the problem. And you definitely don't verify system functionality before you identify the problem. What is a common technique used by mal malicious individuals to perform an on-path attack on a wireless network? 
on path uh, means it's the new cool way of saying man in the middle. So on a wireless network, that could be evil twin. Yeah, you just pretend to be their router. You pretend to be their access point, excuse me. Uh, technically, I guess it could also be session hijacking. You could do orb spoofing on a wireless router. I mean, any of these, but Evil Twin is the most obvious. A system administrator wants to verify that external IP addresses cannot collect software versioning from servers on the network. Which of the following should the system administrator do to confirm the network is protected? Yeah, you could use Nmap to query your own ports and then see if you can get versioning software from your own servers. I mean, that's a good way to test it, is do it the way they would do it. Um, so yeah. I'm not even halfway. We're, we're on track. I got a hey, drink. Dude, if someone actually chatted into my live stream, I would be so stoked. <laughs> uh, I wish I still had time to make full on videos, but um, that's what I got for now, so cheers. What is the lowest layer? Bottom layer of a bare metal virtualization environment. Oh, I was just working on this yesterday. I did a video, I did a tutorial on uh, installing Kali Linux um, in Oracle's VirtualBox on Windows, and then installing Windows also as a virtual machine on Windows. So the lowest layer is the host operating system. Well, I guess technically the lowest layer is the physical hardware, but is that really what he means? It goes like, it's like physical hardware. Physical hardware, host operating system, hypervisor, guest operating system. So by that logic, I guess I will say physical hardware, even though I'm gonna, I'm gonna be mad if that's wrong. Lowest layer is lowest layer. An additional network segment is urgently needed for QA testing on the external network. A software release could be impacted if this change is not immediate. The request comes directly from management and was just approved through the emergency change management process. Which of the following should the technician do? Make the change, document the requester, document all network changes. Yeah, just do it. Like if, if it's approved, then it came from management and it's gonna break things, then just do it. I document it, but just do it. A network technician determines that two dynamically assigned workstations have duplicate IP addresses. What command should the technician use to correct this issue? Release, renew. Yeah, that works. Which of the following levels would a debugging, a debugging condition generate? A debugging condition, what? Which of the following levels would a debugging condition generate? What? That's so vague. What are we talking about? Programming? Are we talking about OSI model? I'm assuming it's the OSI model because it goes from 1 to 7. And if it is, then debugging would be an application layer issue. So I'm going to go with 7. Which of the following policies or plans would describe the access requirements for connecting a user's laptop to the corporate network? A user's laptop, like their personal laptop. With it's either remote access or BYOD. Oh, we're on track, dude. Forty-five ninety, forty-five ninety. Let's go. Your company is currently using a five gigahertz giga, gigawatt wireless security system. So your boss has asked you to install a two point four gigawatt wireless network to use for the company's computer network to prevent interference. 
which of the following cannot be installed to provide a 2.4 gigahertz wireless network? So in other words, which one is only five gigawatt? I'm pretty sure that is It's either B or G. It's got to be B or G. Excuse me. That was gross. <clears throat> Which type of network device operates at layer one of the OSM model and requires connected devices to operate at half duplex using CSMA CD? Excuse me. Uh, actually, I believe that's a hub. An off-site tape backup storage facility is involved with a forensic investigation. The facility has been told they cannot recycle their outdated tapes until the conclusion of the investigation. Which of the following is the most likely reason for this? Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, process of discovery. Notice of a legal hold. Jason is a network manager leading a project to, to deploy a SAN storage area network. He is working with the vendor support technician to set up and configure the SAN on the enterprise network. To begin SAN IO optimization, what should Jason provide to the vendor support technician? Uh... Set up and configure. Probably, yeah, network diagrams would be good. Asset management document. No, I think network diagrams. John Training utilizes a wired network throughout the building to provide network connectivity. Jason is concerned that a visitor might plug their laptop into a Cat5D e wall duck in the lobby and access the corporate network. What technology should be utilized to prevent users from gaining access to network resources if they can plug their laptops into the network? Network access control. This would be demilitarized zone, unified threat management, virtual private network. We don't need any of those. We need network access control. Janet is a system administrator who is troubleshooting an issue with a DNS server. She notices that the security logs have filled up and must be cleared from the event viewer. She recalls this being a daily occurrence. Which of the following would best resolve this issue? Really? Is this a thing? Like, you have to clear your security logs every day. What if something happens? You need to look at them from before. That's terrible. Uh, install an event management tool. Yeah, that, that seems logical. Or you can increase the log size, but they're still going to fill up eventually. I mean, you should be able to have more than one day of logs. So that's impractical. That's just dumb. So... Uh, I don't know. Seems like smarter. Scott is a brand new network technician at Diana Training. He has been told to remote into the edge switch from his desk and enable DHCP snooping. Which of the following should he use? Uh, this is the only one that would work. None of the other ones are for. None of the other ones are for remoting in. Your company wants to create highly available data centers, which the following will allow the company to continue maintaining an internet presence at all sites if the WAN connection at their own site goes down. This would be Open Shores Path First, Border Gateway Protocol. I don't know what that is. Load Balancer. Your company wants to create highly available data centers. They want an internet presence at all sites if the WAN connection at their own site goes down. Load balancer. So you're saying they have multiple data data centers? And if one goes down they want the other one to stay up? I guess it would be a load balancer. Like just send all the traffic to the other data center. You are working as a wireless networking technician and have been sent out to a user's home to install a brand new 802.11 AC wireless access points to replace their old access point. 
to ensure all of the excuse me to ensure all the current devices on the network will automatically connect to the network you set the ssid encryption type and password to the same one as the existing access point you turn the new access point on and notice most of the devices connect automatically but the one older one older wireless printer won't connect you notice the printer is about seven years old but the user says it has always worked what is the most likely reason that the printer will not connect to the new access point there's your other ac Uh, a frequency mismatch. Well, AC should be both frequencies, so it doesn't really make sense. But uh, change the power. No, I was putting wrong password. Incorrect channel. No, it's it's probably frequency. I I don't know. These other ones don't make as much sense. Which of the following applies to data as it travels from layer one to layer seven? Encapsulation. No, the the encapsulation. The encapsulation because it's stripping down. So all you want is that juicy application data. You are configuring a network to utilize SNMP version three to send information from your network devices back to an SNMP manager. Which of the following SNMP options should you enable to ensure the data is transferred confidentially? Excuse me. Oh, well, I have no idea. I don't know. I've never used SNMP commands. Are you kidding me? But I mean, let's take a good guess. Confidential SNMP option off. I, I'm, I think it probably starts with off. Is it supposed to encrypt or priv? Yeah, off encrypt. Let's just go. Let's just Google and see what happens. Is that a thing? Oh. No, I don't think it's a thing. Command to secure SNMP. SNMP simple commands. Give me some simple commands, man. So, uh, SNMP set, sync, wait, the blah blah blah. The blah blah blah. Transaction tracking, um, Yeah. How should we secure? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Securing SNMP Red Hat. Uh, let's see. SNMP security option. Excuse me. Okay, so it looks like it's the no it's the no off for the auth user auth priv auth priv yeah i think it's auth priv all right michael the system administrator is troubleshooting an issue remotely accessing a new windows server on the local area network using its host name he cannot remotely access the new server but he can access another windows server using its host name on the same subnet which of the following commands should he enter on his workstation to resolve this connectivity issue? He's going by host name, which is a DNS thing, so if he flushes, he should be fine. Which protocol is used for the synchronization of clocks between different its NTP network time protocol? A technician just completed a new external website and set up an access control list in the firewall. After some testing, only users outside the internal network can access the site. The website responds to a ping from the internal network and resolves the proper public address. What can the technician do to fix this issue while causing internal users to route to the website using its internal IP address? Uh, 
I need to move this. Rocks. That's better, right? A new external website. So an access control list. Only users outside the internal network can access the site. Uh, it seems like uh, I think it's a split horizon thing. Wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna put that on the list. Split horizon. I don't know why I'm blanking out on what that is. It's something really obvious, but I don't remember. Uh, it's like in the name. I yes. Maybe my subconscious knows. A network technician is diligent about maintaining all system servers at the most current service pack level available. After performing upgrades, users experience issues with server-based applications, which the following should be used to prevent issues in the future. Uh, yeah, configure a test lab, you dingus. You don't just always go straight to the newest patch right away. Or, or you can do that too, but just don't have the issues. You've been asked to install a media converter that connects a newly installed SMF to the existing CAT 6A infrastructure. Which type of media converter should you use? What is... What? What, what this? So not MIT. What? No. Too many acronyms in the world, man. You can't just... 5G. What? Oh, I'm dumb. Single mode fiber. So it'd be fiber to Ethernet. <laughs> yeah, it's nothing with coaxial, but I could had to be sure. Single mode fiber, multi mode fiber, and SMS, F, SMF, MMF. It has to do with the number of lasers in the fiber. Single mode would be one single tiny la laser on a super thin diameter and then multi mode would be like multiple lasers bouncing around at different frequencies which of the following is most likely to use an rj11 connect to connect a computer to an internet service provider using a plain old telephone plain old tele whatever that pots line uh, an analog modem yeah because no none of this doesn't make sense Several users at an adjacent office building report intermittent connectivity issues after a new flagpole. A new flagpole was installed between the two offices. The network technician has determined the adjacent office building is connected to, to the main office building via an 802.11 AC bridge. The network technician logs into the access point, confirms the SSID, encryption, and channels are all correct, which the following is most likely to cause this issue. Intermittent connectivity after a new flagpole was installed. Well, I wonder what it could be. It's uh, wait, what? Flagpole was installed. It's, it's a Wi Fi connection, so signal attenuation. LDAP 389. It was over TLS, it would be 587, I believe. Now he's just showing off. <clears throat> Your supervisor has asked you to run a Cat5 e cable between two network switches in the server room. Which type of connector should be used with a Cat5 e cable? RJ45. Really? You are working as a network administrator for Dion Training. The company has decided to allow employees to connect their devices to the corporate network. Uh, You've been asked to separate the corporate network into an administrative network corporate owned devices and an untrusted network for employee owned devices. Which of the following should you use? VLAN. Dion Training has a single mode fiber optic connection between its main office and its satellite office located 30 kilometers away. Single mode fiber, nice. There's a break in the cable 12 kilometers from the main office. Which the following tools is required to fix this viral optic connection? So that would be fusion splicer, which is what it's like, like melts two fiber optic cables back together. Super expensive, I guess. You are connect conducting a wireless penetration test against WPA2 PSK network. 
Which of the following types of password attacks should you conduct to verify if the network is using any of the top 1,000 commonly used passwords? Dictionary. Well, brute force. I mean, it's both, kind of. So, brute force would be trying all 1,000 password hashes. Dictionary would be... I mean, it's technically... You're not... It's brute force, whatever. Dictionary was when you get a bunch of passwords and you try them all. Depending on who you ask, some people say it's like, no, you literally try and words out of the dictionary. Um, actually, technically, though, but now I'm overthinking it. Because brute force would be actually trying the passwords on the access point. But what you would really do is capture the four way handshake and then try to crack the hash with a dictionary attack. You wouldn't technically be brute forcing. Oh boy. Now I've overthought it. Whatever. You just heard of a new ransomware attack that has been rapidly spreading across the internet that takes advantage of a vulnerability in the Windows protocol. That would be Eternal Blue. To protect your network until Microsoft releases a security update, you want to block via port. Okay. Well, that was a lot of nothing for... Much ado about nothing. Port 445 is SMB, so... There we go. 143 would be IMAP, 514 would be, what's it called? I can't remember right now. That's Network Time Protocol. Which of the following must be added to a VLAN's gateway to improve the security of the VLAN? You'd add an access control list if you wanted to. Which of the following types of network documentation will provide a drawing of the network cabling imposed over the floor plan for an office building? Physical network diagram. Not logical. It would be physical. Well, no, not a network diagram. It would be a wiring diagram. This physical network diagram would just be the network. Site survey report would be... I guess it would be a site survey report, actually. When a kernel or government investigation is underway, what describes the identification, recovery, or exchange of electronic information relevant to that investigation? E-discovery. John Worldwide has recently built a network to connect four offices around the world together. Each office contains a single centralized switch that all of the clients connect to within that office. These switches are then connected to two of the other locations using a direct fiber connection between each office. The office in New York connects to the London office, the London office connects to the Hong Kong office, the Hong Kong office connects to the California office, and the California office connects to the New York office. Which of the following network topologies best describe the downward wide? Wow, that was terribly written. I hate this question. The office in New York. Okay, so it's a big circle, right? Yeah, congratulations. Yeah. Oh, each one contains a single centralized switch that all of the clients connect to within that office. The switches are connected to other locations using fiber. So it's a it's a ring star. The ring star. It's a hybrid. Tamra just purchased a Wi-Fi enabled Nest thermostat for her home. She has hired you to install it, but she's worried about a hacker breaking into the thermostats. This is an IoT device. <laughs> Which of the following is the best thing to do to mitigate Tamra's security concerns? Upgrade the firmware. Yeah, that's always a good idea. Two factor? Uh-huh, sure. Do that too. Yeah, do all of these. <laughs> Uh, this, I guess that'll help. Don't do that. That would also work, but then what's the point of having it? Um, I mean, honestly, two factor. And upgrading your firmware would be best, but uh, I'm gonna stick with my answers there. Which type of wireless network utilizes five gigahertz and reaches speeds of up to fifty-four megabits per second? This is the same question that I had before. I'm pretty sure it's B, but it's that's not. It's wrong. It's gonna be energy. I don't know. Maybe G. 
company has a secondary data center in a remote location. The data center staff handles cable management and power management. The building security is also handled by the data center staff with little oversight from the company. Which of the following should the technician do to follow the best practice? Yeah, locking cabinets and racks, I guess. What is true concerning jumbo frames? They are commonly used with a... Oh, what? I don't remember. Not DHCP. It's not less than 15. I would say a SAM. A technician has finished configuring AAA on a new network device. However, the technician cannot log into the device with LDAP credentials, but can... With local user count, what is the most likely reason for this problem? Uh, what, is, what is AAA? <laughs> I should probably know what that is, but I don't. Uh, I'm going to say shared secret key. IDS is blocking radius. Why would IDS block radius? Oh, so this is like an authentication thing. Lightweight directory access protocol. I don't know, let's go to group policy. <sighs> Your company is experiencing slow network speeds. Recommend a solution. You have recommended the company upgrade to NATO 18 or 211 and or 8 12 and AC wireless to first to turn higher network speeds. Which of the following technologies allows an 8211N or 8211AC network to achieve a speed greater than 54 megabits per second? Multi input, multi output. This is a simulated PBQ. Select the proper antennas to establish a wireless connection between the two buildings. Oh, dude, I did this before in a different practice test, and I was like, I was pissed. Okay, so. Establish a wireless connection between the two buildings. So AP4 and AP5 basically need to communicate. And they're both outside. So this needs... Uh, so AP5 needs a parabolic left and, and AP4 needs a parabolic right. Yeah, that's that one. The first question. Yeah, so I've taken his N. I took his N ten, double O seven practice test. This was like the first question, and I got it wrong. And I was mad. It was way more complicated though, because he had all three of these options in here too. It was super confusing. So, I mean, yeah, what? I think that's that's easy. It's easy. It seems easy now. Which of the following levels would an error condition generate? Dude, what is up with these questions? Which of the following levels would an error condition an error? It's so general, I don't understand why it is. An error condition. All, all, all people seem to, to transport. There are five. One is physical, three is uh, data link. Network. I thought transfer was four. Whatever. Uh, dude, I don't know. This is confusing. I don't understand this question. I feel like. I want to say one because I'm thinking of coding and like one would be an error and zero would be no error. But I'm going to put seven because I have no idea what he's talking about. If you're installing a new LAN in a building your company just purchased. The building is older, but your company has decided to install brand new CAT 6A. You're trying to determine whether to purchase plenum or PVC cabling. Which environmental conditions should be considered before making the purchase? Paradox placement. Because if you don't have a plan of space, there's no point in buying plenum cable. Yeah. 
Elizabeth was replacing a client's security device that protects their screen subnet. The client has an application that allows external users to access the application remotely. Which of the following devices was most likely misconfigured and is now causing a problem? Firewall. Is the supposed to connect? That's what protects the screen subnet. Which of the following technologies combines the functionality of a firewall, malware scanner, and other security appliances into one device? That would be an, an intrusion detection or intrusion for okay, it's the unified threat management. Which type of wireless network utilizes the 5 gigahertz frequency band and reaches speeds of up to 3.5 gigabits per second? I believe that's AX. I don't think any, no, AC? Yeah, AC. AX is faster than that. I have AX. <laughs> Pretty sure it's AC. If it's not AC, it's, it's gotta be AC. You are working as a network technician running new unshielded twisted pair cables from the intermediate distribution frame to the individual offices, comes in 1,000 foot spools, which the following tools should use to break the cable into shorter distances. Cable snips, basically scissors. What type of cloud model would allow the sharing of resources by multiple organizations to create a service that benefits all of its members? That would be a community cloud. PDQ, what ports do file transfer protocol and secure file transfer protocol utilize? That would be 20, 21, and 22, actually. So these are all wrong because file transfer protocol utilizes 20 and 21. Secure file transfer protocol uses 22. So I'm assuming he means 20, 21, and 22. 20 is active mode data of actually transferring 21 is passive mode or control so but i'm going to say 21 and 22 because secure ftp is 22 and ftp is 21 so that makes the most sense 23 is telnet so those are both wrong this is also wrong these are all wrong jason dion is wrong Andy is a network technician who is preparing to configure a company's network. He has installed a firewall to segment his network into an internal network, a DMZ or screen subnet, and an external network. No hosts on the internal network should be directly accessible by their IP address from the internet, but they should be able to reach remote networks if they have been assigned an IP address within the network. Which of the following IP addressing solutions will work for this particular network configuration? I did that thing. Or read it and don't register anything. <laughs> so he basically wants nobody to be visible to the internet, like how every Soho in this setup. <laughs> he wants a screen subnet and an external network. So what IP addressing solution should he use? Um, well, yeah, classless and yeah, private. Don't know what that is. Not That's not right. So I'm going to say classless, I guess. Because a screen subnet would require some public IP addresses. But uh, anyway, which of the following type of network models? requires the use of specialized computers that utilize the client server. Last question, which type of network wireless network utilizes 2.4 and reaches up to 54 megabits per second? Pretty sure that's A. I, I kind of get A and B confused. Like, should have just looked it up at the beginning. I could have got all those wireless questions right. I feel like he had about six questions on Wi-Fi standards. It's like, okay. All right, let's see how we did. Hey, 77%. That's that's not terrible. That's a fail, but 70 out of 90, that's pretty good. Um, for my first attempt, I am quite pleased, actually. So we did bad on what? We did bad on network implementations. 
We didn't do so great on network operations. Our fundamentals, um, point. Security is pretty good. Troubleshooting is decent. Okay. I'm cool with that. Let's. Whoa, what the. Okay. I just. I don't know what just happened. Um. My, hello? Hello? So. Yeah, I did these practice exams for A. Passed my A with those. Um, this. <laughs> I did some of these. It's like, why is it grayed out? It's all blacked out. He just flips it back and forth. <laughs> oh, that's epic. <laughs> you still put A plus there? Uh, Alright, sorry. Uh, let's review the answers. Let's review the answers. Hello? Let's review. Let's review. Um, I want to review my questions, sir. Show me review questions. All right. So, oh, hey, look, I got that correct. Imagine that. It not not as bad as I thought. Uh, mesh, correct. Fourteen three three, correct. Insufficient wireless coverage. All right. You know what? Let's only look. No, let's look at all of them. I don't know. Maybe you guys followed along. Maybe you actually care. Static was correct. Okay, first incorrect was so it was an a two dot one q thing interesting i'm not really convinced Yeah, you share, you share inter network interfaces with multiple VLANs, but why would that, the key didn't specify that it was on a different VLAN. If anything, it was, uh, it was unclear, okay? It was unclear. I don't like that, but whatever, that's fine. Uh, this one didn't really make sense either, so. <laughs> I, yeah. that, that's on me. If the switch port is configured for 802.1Q trunking instead of as an access host port, the workstation will be unable to reach the DHCP server. <laughs> an access host port. Oh. I see. The switch port, as in the port on the switch that the that the workstation is connected to. So 802.1Q trunking should not be used on a port that a workstation is connected to because you only have one VLAN on that port, which is the VLAN that that workstation is connected to. The 802.1Q should be on ports that are connected to other switches so that VLAN traffic can go between them. That actually makes perfect sense. I take everything back, Jason. I take it back. Firewall, correct. Show config. Why did I forget that was a thing? That uh, should have been the answer. I don't know why I forgot that was a thing. All right. Show config. I've worked with Cisco switches too. I can't. I can't believe I forgot that. This would show. Show interface would show. Yep. The show route is also used. I knew that. Show diagnostic is also used. Oh, didn't know that. Oh, clearly I didn't know Cisco devices as well as I thought. Okay, so deny traffic from ETH2 to ETH0? Really? Interesting. My answer made sense too, but whatever. You will block network traffic from internal to public, this will prevent students from accessing their work on all requests, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it would be a good idea to block from ETH0 to ETH2. What if they just want to reach someone on the public network without seeing the internet? Yeah, technically, yes. That's true. Whatever. DDoS correct, port security. Oh, nice. That one I was not sure about. 
Okay, this seems confusing, but that's okay. Oh, port security, also known as persistent Mac or sticky Mac. Okay, that helps clarify. Blah, blah, blah. I want to hear him say why the, these are not the answer, because these could also work with this question, but whatever. Ring is correct, blah, blah, blah. Successful WPS attack. Uh, okay. Yeah, I guess. Well, yeah, I guess our poison, you wouldn't necessarily see multiple users, actually, that would be this. So we need someone logged into your like, that shouldn't be there. So, sure, WPS. Okay, reset. <clears throat> 802.11a. 54, 2.4 gigahertz. Right, that means I got it wrong, like, two other times as well. Outside backups, correct. WPA personal, correct. Flash the firmware, correct. Hey, that was lucky. That's a big toss-up. Port forwarding, correct. Route, correct. Omnidirectional, correct. Deploy the patch first, then test it, blah, blah, blah. Rapid elasticity. Modulation was right. Are you serious? Orthogonal freaking dinging dinging. It's multiplexing. Not modulating. Define modulation. Hmm. Huh, interesting. Whatever. All right, we're gonna. Cause I I need to go to bed, so we're gonna go to incorrect questions, <laughs> and just do it that way. So where were we? Three. Okay. Um. Shut down. Re-enable. Incorrect. Assign the interface in two dot one Q tag to its own VLAN. Oh, so that there would be less like interference from other VLANs on that port. So it it wouldn't be getting. Extraneous noise, basically. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Untagged, numerous devices, overloaded or oversubscribed. To solve this issue, give it its own VLAN. That makes sense. Return time objective was incorrect. Retur recovery point objective. Really? What? But you said measured in time. The recovery time objective is the duration of time and a service level within which a business must present to sort after that trip to avoid unacceptable consequences associated with a breaking continuity. Which of the following terms would be the maximum amount of data as measured in time that an organization is willing to lose during an outage? How is that not recovery time objective? Recovery point objective is the interval of time that might pass during a disruption before the quantity of data lost exceeds the business continuity. <laughs> interval of time and duration of time, really? <laughs> okay. Seems like you're really splitting hairs there. Packet captures container with packet. That doesn't seem right either, but that's okay. Uh, really, 802.11ac doesn't work on 2.4 gigahertz. Really? Okay. Oh, I think it has to work on both. So these are all 2.4s. This one has to work on both. It's not definitely not only 5. Oh, they both use it? Huh. Okay. Okay. I was wrong. Totally wrong. You need to study those for sure. A notice of a legal hold. Okay, that's fine. Border gateway protocol.
Oh, it is a centered exterior gateway protocol. Virtual router redundancy protocol. That's cool. What about <laughs> load balancer? <laughs> load balancer. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> that wasn't right. Uh oh right. A load balancer can't go between sites. That makes sense. What? NB stat R. A client is likely attempting to connect to the server using NetBIOS. If the entry of the client file is pointing to the wrong IP, this could cause the connectivity issues described. Therefore, the system admin should enter the nbstat r command to purge and reload the cache name table from the lm host file on their Windows workstation. Cached name table, huh? The IP. Interesting. That's new to me. Put that on the list. NB stat R. That's not something I understood. Okay. Uh, what is a physical network diagram? Darn. And we got configure and configure. Yeah, that was that was. Come on, man. Two vectors totally better. A or two eleven A, not G. Wow, A is a five G. Um, shared secret key is mismatched. Okay. Number three. Okay, what is this about, dude? Severity levels range from zero to seven, with zero being the most severe and seven being the least severe. Level zero is used for an emergency and is considered the most severe condition because the system has become unstable. Level one is used for an alert condition, level two for critical, level three for error, level four for warning, level five for notice, level six for information, and level seven for debugging. What? How have I not heard about this? Uh, levels and errors. And error codes, I guess? I don't know, dude. That's why. Oh, I haven't heard about it. Maybe I did. I tuned out. At the wrong time, apparently. Yeah, private. Okay, fine. Yeah. I, I'm getting tired. Excuses. Excuses. It would technically be classless IP addressing too. Which type of wireless network utilizes the 2.4 gigahertz band? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, cool. That's it. So like Wi-Fi was like five of those. And then we had some other technical internet-y stuff. You know, just, just study more, do better. I hope this was helpful to you and that you enjoyed my video. This is live stream, but I'm sure you're watching this on demand. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.